Welcome back investors, Jake here. In this video, we're gonna talk about IPOs and SPACs. IPO stands for Initial Public Offering. SPAC stands for Special Purpose Acquisition Company. And these are the two routes that a company can take in order to be publicly traded on the New York Stock Exchange. And every week on my channel, guys, I keep getting comments from people saying, Jake, what do you think of this company? Can you review this stock on your channel? Sure enough, I look it up and it's an IPO or a SPAC. So I'm declaring a new rule on my channel, guys, that uh, if a company has not been publicly traded for longer than two years, I'm not gonna invest in that company, I'm not gonna trade that company. The reason why is because the past performance of IPOs and SPACs are terrible. We're gonna go through that in this video. So, new rule going forward, guys. Don't ask me about IPOs or SPACs. They're bad investments. And that's the joke on Wall Street, guys. This is what Wall Street thinks of people who buy IPOs and SPACs. The joke on Wall Street is IPO stands for it's probably overvalued. SPACs perform even worse than IPOs. And the reason why is because when a company wants to become publicly traded, they're trying to get as much money as possible from the public. This is the public offering part. So the company has to go to the investment banks. And usually several of these investment banks will team up to form a banking syndicate. And the banking syndicate's job is to get the highest possible valuation for a company that they can get without the price collapsing, even though most of the time the price still collapses. And there's an inherent conflict of interest because the banking syndicate gets paid on commission. They usually take home 7% of whatever the IPO brings in uh, initially. <clears throat> so the goal of the company is to get as much money from you. They don't really care how the stock performs in the short term. The goal of the banking syndicate is to get as much money from you. So this is why IPOs so often are overpriced. So let's talk about <clears throat> additionally why they perform so terrible. We already covered that uh, the companies are trying to get as much money from you as possible. Number two is you're probably not actually getting IPO shares anyways. And the official IPO shares are often reserved for the institutional clients at these investment banks. It's kind of a buddy-buddy system to uh, reward the large money clients uh, at these companies. So <clears throat> more than likely, you're not getting the true IPO price uh, institutional clients are, and they can just dump them on day one when the market opens and retail investors and index funds start adding the stock. Reason number three is that the company is going to massively dilute your ownership those first two years by issuing new company stock. The reason for this is because the company, when it goes public, more than likely is not profitable yet. And the only way you can stay in business as a company if you're not profitable is to either, one, take on debt, which makes your risk of going bankrupt higher, or two, issue new stock to raise more capital from the public. This will reduce your effective ownership per share in the company. Reason number four is that company insiders are going to sell out of the stock once it's publicly traded for private equity companies and venture capitalists. These are the series A, B, and C funding for the company. They can't cash out. They can't make any money until the company goes publicly traded. And usually they'll have contracts with lockup agreements saying they won't sell for six months, one year, 18 months, or whatever. But as soon as those lockup agreements expire, they want to cash out and move on to the next, uh, you know, startup company that they want to invest in. So this puts selling pressure on the share price of the stock, meaning more than likely you can get it for a cheaper price if you just wait. And then reason number five that I want to argue in this video is the opportunity cost. A dollar is a dollar. It doesn't matter where you put it. All that matters is its performance. And you always have the opportunity cost to just invest in low-cost S&P 500 index funds. And the S&P, guys, last year was up 28%. 
So if you didn't know what to do with your money, you couldn't pick individual stocks, you could have just bought the entire market and then ridden it up 28%. So before we get into specific examples, I just want to say that of course you can make money short-term trading an IPO or SPAC. For example, let's look at Robinhood. If you bought it on opening day and then wrote it up a week later and made 56% on your money, congratulations, you're a genius if you sold at the top. If you got out of this IPO before it plummeted 54% from its IPO price. So if you know how to short-term trade IPOs and SPACs, please start a YouTube channel and teach me how to do it because this doesn't look safe to me. So let's start with the 10 largest IPOs in 2019. I will link the article down below if you want to check it out. But the 10 largest IPOs were Uber, Aventor, Lyft, XP Inc., Pinterest, Smile Direct Club, Trade Web Markets, Chewy, Peloton, and Zoom. Let's see, now that we have two years worth of information, which of these IPOs are either positive but more importantly, which outperformed the broader market? Which of these companies, dollar is a dollar, which of these outperformed the S&P 500 index fund since being publicly traded? So we'll start with Uber. It IPO'd in May of 2019. Over the last two and a half years, uh, the share price is up 6%. But if you had just bought and held S&P 500 index funds, you would have been up 66%. So Uber, since going IPO, underperformed the market average by, uh, by, by over 60%. So once again, the argument I'm making in this video, guys, is there's an opportunity cost for your money. Uber's a great company, it could have a promising future, but once again, IPOs tend to be overvalued, and if you just wait uh, a little bit, you can often get these companies, great companies, for a cheaper price. Next company is Aventar, IPO'd in May of 2019. This is a chemicals and materials company out of Pennsylvania. I've never heard of this company, but it's actually done really well. Uh, since its IPO, it's up 170%. In that time, the market was up 67. So congrats, Aventar outperformed the market by 103%. So once again, if, if you're savvy enough to discover this IPO of a chemicals and material company, start your own YouTube channel, teach me your ways. But I don't think many people on YouTube were uh, investing in this company when it IPO'd. Next company is Lyft. Everybody's heard of Lyft. Wow, since its IPO, it is down 42%. In that time, the market was up 69. So Lyft underperformed the market by 111%. Next company is XP Inc. Since going IPO in December of 2019, it's down 25%, so it underperformed the market by 76%. Next company is Pinterest. Uh, lots of people really like Pinterest. And you can see that since going IPO in April of 2019, it's up 35%. However, the market was up 65 so Pinterest underperformed by 30%. Next company is Smile Direct Club. This, I don't know what's going on with this stock. This looks like it's going to go bankrupt. But it IPO'd in September of 2019. It's down 86% since it went IPO. And the market is up 59%. So Smile Direct Club has underperformed by 145%. Next company is Trade Web Markets. It's an international financial services company up 157% since IPOing in April of 2019. Once again, if you have heard of this company or invested in its IPO, kudos to you, that was a really good find. The market was only up 65%, so Trade Web outperformed by 92%. That's pretty cool. Next up is Chewy, which is a pet food uh, company, IPO'd in June of 2019. It's up 55% since its IPO. The market is up 66, so Chewy underperformed by 11%. Next company is Peloton, and believe it or not, guys, even though Peloton is down 70 or 80% from its high, it's still above its IPO price by 33%, which is good. 
but the market has performed 61% in that time, so Peloton has underperformed by 28%. And then finally, we have Zoom Video Communications. It's actually up 190% since its IPO, but most people never used or heard of Zoom prior to the pandemic hitting. That's when its share price skyrocketed, and it's stuck in a downtrend right now. This is probably going to keep falling, and I wouldn't be surprised if Zoom eventually was under $100 per share. But in this time, the market was up 65, so Zoom did outperform by 125%, but I think with uh, the whole pandemic thing, that skews its number. If you, if you were psychic enough to buy the Zoom IPO knowing there was going to be a global pandemic that would benefit Zoom, once again, start that YouTube channel, Teach Me Your Ways. So just looking at these 10 stocks, guys, never heard of Avantar, never heard of TradeWeb, uh, Zoom is an anomaly, and the rest of these are, are down. You would have been better off holding the broader market. So let's now look at the 10 largest IPOs for 2020. We have about at least one year, one and a half years for a lot of these companies. How do you think they've performed? Let's start with Airbnb, IPO'd in December of 2020 currently up 16%, but the market is up 28% in this time, so Airbnb underperformed by 12%. Next up is DoorDash. Uh, DoorDash is just down 26%, while the market has gone up 28%, so you would have underperformed by 54%. Next company is Snowflake. A lot of buzz with this company. Probably does have a bright future being added to the S&P 500 soon. Uh, it, it was up 23% since its IPO in September of 2020, but the market was up 41% during that time. So Snowflake has underperformed the S&P by 18%. <clears throat> Next, we have Palantir, uh, IPO'd October 2020. It's up 84% while the market is up 40 So Palantir is an exception. It did outperform if you bought it for its IPO shares. The problem is, guys, a lot of finance YouTubers started talking about and promoting this stock after it went up uh, 200 300%. YouTubers tend to do this, where they talk about IPOs and SPACs after they've gone up huge. Uh, and, and if you were buying up here, you're, you're, not, you're not up any money. So if you got Palantir at its IPO at $10, congratulations to you. Next company is Warner Music Group, IPO'd in June 2020, currently up 32%, but the market in that time up 47, so it's underperformed by 15%. Next, we have a company, Rocket, Rocket Companies. It's just down 43%, while the market has gone up 40%, so it's underperformed by 83%. Next is a Chinese electric vehicle company, Xping. Since its IPO, it's up 102%. The market's gone up 34 So Xping has outperformed by 68%. We're going to mention another Chinese EV stock. I'll give you my thoughts on it in a second here. But first, got to talk about Unity Software, quality video game company out of San Francisco. IPO'd September 2020, up 77%. And it has outperformed the market by 36%. Uh, GoodRx Holdings, just down 45%, while the market has gone up 42% in that time. So GoodRx IPO underperformed by 87%. Finally, we have Li Auto, the other Chinese EV manufacturer. Since its IPO, it's up 82%, so it's outperformed the market by 39%. With these EV stocks, guys, it hasn't quite been two years yet. I definitely think this whole sector of the market, because there's so much competition, a lot of these companies, in my opinion, are overvalued, and I think their valuations this year will come down. I mentioned that in my market prediction video. So once again, if you got Palantir or Unity Software at the IPO price, like bought it on the first day, you're doing pretty well. But if you waited until after... Uh, the first couple weeks when it shot up huge, when all the other finance YouTubers tend to start promoting a stock, um, this is uh, you're down since its peaks, basically. 
Lee Auto and Xping, once again, the EV sector, we're not sure. For 2021, we don't have a full year's worth of data yet to, to show you to compare, so maybe this isn't fair, but just looking at some of the biggest, most high-profile IPOs in 2021, their performances are terrible, guys. Rivian, down 30% since its IPO in November. This was only a month and a half ago. Robinhood, uh, down 54% since its IPO six months ago in July. Uh, Udemy, down 41% since its IPO three months ago. And Warby Parker, down 22% since its IPO three months ago. And Bumble, down 57% since its IPO in February. These are, these are terrible numbers, guys. Like, why would you want to risk it if you're a long-term buy-and-hold investor? In my opinion, IPOs and SPACs, their first two years, are not a good investment. If you want to try and short-term trade them, good luck to you. I can't do it. I don't even want to try. So here's the secret, guys. This is uh, the counterintuitive na nature of good investing, is that the time to buy these companies, great companies like Snowflake and Airbnb, if you want to buy these stocks, wait two years, set a calendar date somehow and remind yourself, after two years, look at it. Has the share price gone down? Uh, has revenue at the company continued increasing? When the hype and the buzz and the hysteria has gone away, that's actually the perfect time uh, to buy a stock, especially good companies that, that maybe once the selling pressure from insiders has stopped, once uh, the valuation from the market and the technicals support it, that's the time to buy a great company uh, after after the two-year mark, guys. That's, that's the message I want to hammer home in this video to you. So... I know people are going to keep asking me about IPOs and SPACs. Uh, I'm just going to link them this video in the future. Those are the thoughts I wanted to get across to you guys. If you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up so the algorithm knows it's good. If you have any comments or questions, let me know down below. I love hearing from you guys. Till the next video, take care.